growing up, um, a lot of my, we were all diverse. So I had classmates that were Mor Moroccan, I had classmates that were white, Indian, Jamaican. So race wasn't really a big thing. Like you just knew who you were and we all got along until like I moved here to the States and it was a big thing between, you know, being black or being white and then like the different verbiage, woman of color, man of color, African-American, different things like that. Like it was one thing to have an issue with like your complexion and then it was another thing to have an issue with your race and what you look like because of the color of your skin. And then sophomore year, I had a friend who was African American and she just honestly educated me on why people took, or why African Americans took certain subjects to heart and why I was so sensitive in the way that they acted in things. Oh, okay. Keep well, like as, a, uh, as a self identified black woman, do you feel as though that sometimes you're responsible, kind of like for uh, all black women? through your actions in different environments? I would say that as a woman, period, we are responsible for everything that we put out there. <laughs> now, as an African-American woman, we are, looked in a di we are looked at in a different light um, because some women are more comfortable in their body than other people or other women because some women have bigger assets than other women. They feel like they have to either tone it down or filter <laughs> how they project themselves on social media or the posts that they put or how they carry themselves. So it's kind of like a double standard, but overall as women, we do have to take more responsibility or have to filter the stuff that we post because of the life that we're in or the comments or the reactions that we're going to get back. Okay. So as problematic as this next statement might sound, do you feel as though that in uh, the age bracket, let's do 21 to 27, that uh, well-versed black women in media, um, such as Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, text message, anything like that, you feel as though black women can't be checked for their actions? I don't feel like black women can't be checked. I think that's how people grow. I think that's how, um, as black women, we can progress and be stronger and be better. I think a lot of times when you hear the word <coughs> checked, you have a negative connotation with it. There's nothing wrong with being corrected. As a woman, if I see that you are portraying yourself a certain type of way that's going to give you negative you know, feedback or people are going to look at you in a certain way, it's my duty or as another woman to hold you accountable the same way as men have to hold each other accountable or men hold women accountable and women hold men accountable. If I see a young man walking around and his pants are sagging and his boxers are hanging out, I would kind of say, hey sir, you know, your pants are showing, like just pull it up. I just think that a lot of times when we're correcting each other, it always comes off as someone is hating on them or someone is trying to belittle or degrade them and it's not necessarily the case all the time, but we just have to be open to correction and just have an open mind when being checked or corrected that somebody is trying to better you, not necessarily belittle you or stunt your shine. So let's let's focus on the aspect of portrayal. Okay. <clears throat> because we do live we we and let's be honest in this conversation, we live in a very hyper sexualized age. We do where once where a black woman's body was kind of detested by the mainstream Caucasian culture, it's now become the epitome of, be of mm, I was about to say booty. <laughs> <laughs> beauty. Uh, if you don't have curve, well, as a matter of fact, you look at people like Kylie Jenner uh, or Kim Kardashian, they've given themselves body enhancements to have what black women naturally produce. And while it's a paradox in itself, why do you feel as though black women of our, uh, of our let's say, millennial culture, millennial age, try to emulate that but become upset? when people call them out women? When I hear that question, it reminds me basically of the question I always ask people. Why is it okay for a black person to call another black person the N-word, but it's not okay for a white person to call a black person the N-word when we all say it? So you ask me, why is it okay, or why do we feel like it's a problem for people that are not African American to enhance themselves when we try to do it ourselves? I think it's just basically, you're going back to that phase where you're trying to build yourself back up. This is something that you took from me. You always made fun of me for having big lips or full lips. You made fun of me for having a big butt or just being fully figured. 
and you took my confidence down from that so I'm just trying to build myself back up and this is something that I have naturally and somebody who lacks in those assets or does not necessarily have those genes genetically you pay to get that so it's like while I'm trying to regain that confidence of something that I had natural or something that was given to me I feel like you're trying to take that away from me because now you're paying to get that and you're being highlighted or praised for having the same thing that I had naturally whereas when I had it naturally you guys made fun of me or it made me feel less than because I had to dress a certain type of way but you at the same time want a black woman to filter how they dress and control what they portray but you have white women or different celebrities like you said Kylie Jenner Kim Kardashian just flaunting it without issue so it kind of becomes I guess like a sense of authority this is something that I have to do naturally whereas you're praising somebody that paid to do it so so let's let's while we're on that topic uh, delving further down the rabbit hole we and I'm speaking from the perspective of an uh, African-American individual. Uh, we talk so much about reparations and getting back with SARS and how this country is unfair and how it was founded on slavery and the oppression of people. At what point do you feel as though we as African-Americans should forgive? Uh, kind of like the, well, we blame white people. We do. We blame the great majority of white people not using their privilege to speak up or using their privilege to stunt our growth. At what point do you feel as though forgiveness is an option? <clears throat> I feel like in addition to putting the blame on white people, um, that's kind of like a little iffy for me to answer because I never really had that issue where I had to blame white people for something that happened to me. Um, but I think a lot of times as African Americans, we tend to lack to take responsibility of our own actions we feel like and this may be a little ignorant on my part but it's just like but that is your view it is it wouldn't be yeah good. i feel like for someone who couldn't identify with <laughs> slavery or i guess the struggle of being black in america up until like you know my older ages I never really understood why people continue to blame white people. I mean, I know the history, I get all that, and I, I do respect it, but it's just like, okay, but for how long are you going to blame white people? It comes to a point in time where we have to take responsibility of our own actions. Okay, yes, this is what happened. Not saying that this is what happened. Leave it in the past. Erase it. But how? what are you doing exactly to move on from that? If you don't forgive, and if you don't, I don't want to say necessarily accept the abuse that has happened. But it's like, you have to, okay, so this is the situation I have. This is what has happened. What am I going to do as a black person to no longer remain stuck? Am I going to continue to allow the white person to oppress me forever? Am I going to continue to refer back to what has happened to my ancestors and different things like that? Where you have great figures like, you know, Martin Luther King, uh, Malcolm X, Rosa Parks, different people that took a stand to make change so that we don't repeat the same mistakes that they had. This is what the white people did to us. Okay. Cool. So what are you doing now in this generation, in this millennium, now that you have a voice? Because back then they didn't have a voice as loud as we did. So now that you have a voice, what are you going to do exactly to make that change? You forgive. Not saying that we got to be all best friends, but you forgive and you now take the mistakes and the challenges of what had happened to better yourself as a community, as a people, and move forward. So you've said the word better yourself as people and as a community. Let's use an at-home example. And I'm pretty sure most of the uh, viewers watching this will be able to relate. It's a lot of hurt going on in our generation. Uh, a lot of bad relationships, a lot of failed job attempts, or like uh, issues with school and different things like that. And it's been quite noticed. Uh, you see the perpetuation of meme culture and everything, how you'll hear, let peace come to me in 2018, or I'm leaving all this behind. I'm stepping away from these individuals. How dare I ever let someone hurt me like that again? Honing back on forgiveness, do you feel as though we kind of have conditional forgiveness? We do. Okay, elaborate. We have conditional forgiveness because it's like, I don't know. It's, it's conditional and selective at the same time. A lot of times we want to, we want 
people to forgive us of all kinds of things. That's why what it is that you could have done, but then you have to be selective as to what kind of hurt you're gonna forgive and what kind of hurt that you're going to let go of. A lot of times we just don't, we like to live in the past because once that trust or that barrier has been violated, you just feel like it's impossible to bounce back from. So you have like a perfect picture of a person and once they violate that picture, you're just like, dang, I can never trust you again. Therefore, I don't want to forgive you because I put you on this pedestal. But now I have somebody else that doesn't mean or carry as much weight to me. So it'll be a little bit easier for me to forgive them. But if I did you wrong, the same way you did me wrong, I just feel as though you should forgive me regardless of what it is. So it's like a double standard. Okay, and that, and that sounds like overall, because you can say that, uh, it shows that you display a certain level of maturity because you do have people who... I mean, it's kind of like a job because this goes up into your real life as well. If every negative instance that occurred at your job, you uh, you took that to heart and you never forgot it, then imagine how hard your work life would be when you had to provide for yourself or uh, have income. So with that being said, let me ask you uh, another question. How important is self-care within, especially pertaining to the African American community? What are your views on that? Self-care is everything. So first, I would say that unforgiveness stunts your growth. Without forgiveness, you you basically block your blessings because it's like you don't allow yourself to grow and to heal and to learn from that situation for you to be better so that you don't repeat it. With self-care, I think a lot of times, as an African-American or just like the culture, we deem self-care as a weakness. Do you feel as though the image of the quote unquote black king or black queen is destructive towards the black community and that we should have a more realistic human view? Yes and no. I don't think that we don't have a realistic human view. I just think that sometimes we just don't necessarily acknowledge some of the things. Like we just think that we're immune to certain things and that's not the case. Just because you suffer or just because you are going through certain things that does not make you any less of a strong black person or make you any less of a king. I think that when it comes to self-care, it comes to self-recognition and reflection and just knowing exactly what it is your weaknesses are and how you can better yourself. Because if you're empty, how can you pour into another person? Ooh, okay, I like that. I like yeah, that idea. Yeah, 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 what do you say? Yeah, one more. Well, uh, last question. It's blue. With the, um, this is coming from him. As a case, then how can you blame or forgive white people for slavery if you were never there? Okay, so I was never there, but I still suffer from, or I still have, it still has an effect on me. Because granted, you, I may not have been like a direct slave or have a direct slave master or anything like that. But as an African American, I just feel as though a lot of things are working against me. As an African American male, you always have to work harder because of the things that they did and the things that, like how the, the people in the past were oppressed. Like. Granted, they didn't do anything to me directly, or I wasn't directly affected, but I have some. It has some effect on me. It depends on what, how exactly am I as an individual going to take that on.